God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We also thank you for the blessings that you have given us. We pray, O God, to please forgive us from our wrongdoings and clear our hearts and minds as we watch today's story. Please help us to understand the story, especially the lessons which we will be learning from it. We praise you, O Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of William Carey's story. But before we proceed, let's have a quick review. What were some of the things that William Carey was good at? He was good in biology, history, and learning foreign languages. What did he preach about all the time? He would always preach the passage from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. And how did God speak to William? God will always speak to William every time he reads his Bible. So, William was sure that God was calling him to be a missionary. But so far, he had no idea of what country he would go to or when he would go. He waited for God to guide him. Not long after this, the missionary society heard about Dr. Thomas. Dr. Thomas had been working as a missionary doctor in India. He had come back to England to find someone who would go to India with him. This could be a perfect opportunity to send their first missionary. William could not wait to meet this man. Here was someone who had actually been working as a missionary and knew all of the problems that might occur. And he was looking for someone to take back and work with him. As soon as William and Dr. Thomas met, they were instantly friends. William bombarded him with questions. What is life in India like? How much money would I need to live there? Are the people interested when you talk about Jesus? As Dr. Thomas spoke to the missionary society, it seemed to them that the land of India was like a gold mine. If they sent someone to start working there, they would bring out many treasures. But who should they send? This was the chance William had been waiting for. I will go to India, he said. When they said that they would bring out many treasures, they meant they would be like the explorers going down into a gold mine. But the treasure would not be gold. The treasure would be people. People who would believe in Jesus and be saved from their sins. William would go into the unknown in India, while the ones who stayed at home will have to pray for him, write letters to him, and make sure he had enough money to live. This means, even though they stayed at home, they would all still be serving God together. How about you? Are you willing to do whatever God has planned for you? You know, guys, God may ask some of you to serve Him as a missionary in another part of your own country or in an overseas country if you will grow up. You will leave your home and use the abilities God has given you to help the people you go to. But not all of you will go. God may ask someone to stay 
where you are and support the ones who will go. If you stay, your job is just as important as the person who goes. Even right now while you are young, that is a job you can already be doing. Perhaps there are missionaries that you know who you could be praying for or giving money to. William was so excited when everyone agreed that he should be the one to go to India. Many years earlier, he had told God, Lord, here I am. Send me. Now, finally, he had his opportunity to go. It was very late at night when they finished talking to Dr. Thomas. It was decided that William would travel with Dr. Thomas as soon as winter finished. Now, William had to tell his wife that they would all be moving to the other side of the world, India. She had never been more than a few kilometers away from her home in her whole life. When he arrived at home, he said, Dolly, I have some news. At the Missionary Society meeting, I met a man who has been working in India for several years. He wants someone to go back with him to tell the Indian people about Jesus. And I have told him that I will go. We will have to be ready to sail with him in three months. Dolly looked shocked and afraid. No, William, never. I will not go. What about our three children? And do not forget, I am expecting a baby soon. I cannot travel with a new baby. Oh, William, how could you? She cried. William tried to talk to Dolly, but she had made up her mind. If William wanted to go to India, he would have to go alone. Imagine how William felt. He wanted to be a good husband and a good father. He could hardly be that if he was on the other side of the world. He could not catch a plane and be there in a few days. Because you know why? Over 200 years ago, when this happened, traveling around the world was dangerous and took many months in a small ship. But William also wanted to obey God and he was sure that God had asked him to go to India. Now, what should he do? William went ahead making all of the plans with Dr. Thomas, hoping that Dolly might change her mind. But she refused. Even his father was against him going. On the day before their ship was to sail, Dolly was desperate at the thought of losing her husband. She was sure that she would never see him again. And William was desperate at the thought of being so far away from his family. Suddenly, it was suggested that Dolly invite her sister Kitty to come with them. She could help to care for the children and keep Dolly company. All right, Dolly sighed. If Kitty will come, I will go to India. Amazingly, Kitty agreed. They had one night to get ready. You can imagine the rush. With three young children and a new baby to pack for, they must have stayed up most of the night. But by the next morning, they were on board the ship for India. Now, they had five long months ahead of them on the ship. The voyage was rough, and for weeks, they all suffered seasickness. William used the time on the ship to study the Bengali language with Dr. Thomas, so he would be able to understand the people he would be living amongst. How glad he was that he could quickly learn a new language. Finally, they arrived in the city of Calcutta. William could not wait to start preaching to the Indian people, but there were so many things first to organize. 
They had to find someone where to live and Dr. Thomas helped them find a house to rent and get moved in. William and Dr. Thomas began to travel in the surrounding villages, teaching the Indian people about Jesus. The people listened politely, but nobody turned from worshipping their gods to follow the true God. William said to himself, I need to speak their language better so that I would be able to lead them to Jesus and they also need to read about God for themselves. I will translate the Bible into the Indian languages. So William began to work on translating the New Testament into Bengali, even though he was still learning the language. That's why it was a very slow job that took years. Then, after only 10 weeks in India, he heard some awful news. They had almost run out of money. The money should have lasted for a whole year. Even if he wrote to the Missionary Society back in England, it would be more than half a year before they would receive any money. Dr. Thomas went to work as a doctor, but what about William? William did not know what to do. William felt so alone. His family did not understand him. They were all sick and they wanted to go home, and now they were almost without money. Where would they live when he had no money to pay the rent? Would they end up on the streets with the homeless beggars? This was not how he had imagined life as a missionary. William began to feel almost as miserable as Dolly. But instead of complaining and moaning, William took his problems to God. Following God and doing the things He asks us to do is not always easy. Perhaps you have tried to follow God and do the things that would please Him. Instead of things going well, everything seems to go wrong. God does not promise that once we follow Him, we will never have any more problems, no. But God promised that He will always be with us and help us through our problems. So instead of complaining to others, why not take time to tell Him your problems and ask Him to help you? Because complaining does not change your problems, but talking to God does. As William poured out all of his worries to God, the worry slowly disappeared and he felt peaceful inside. He remembered God's promises to him, promises like, I will never leave you or forsake you. Really, reading the Bible was William's dose of medicine, and he always felt better afterwards. Yes, William reminded himself, God has not forgotten me, and He still cares for me. It was God who called me to work in India, and I will do this work even if I died doing it. Very soon after this, William heard there was an empty house that they could live in for free, and it took three days traveling in a boat to get there. They went further and further away from the houses and people. They passed a huge green crocodile as long as the boat lying on the muddy river bank. It did not move but its yellow eyes watched them paddle by. William suddenly realized why they had to stay in the boat to sleep each night. But William was shocked when they arrived. The house was not empty at all. There was a government worker already living in the house. And to make matters worse, 
he found out there were tigers living in the forest that surrounded them. There had been several tiger attacks and many of the village people had left. Now, what should he do? He was stuck in the middle of forest land with his whole family. But still, William had to trust that God will still look after them. The government man let them move into the house with him. William told the children that they would be safe if they stayed near the house and did not go exploring to the forests. One day, he was working outside making a garden when the family came to join him. Look at these tracks I've found! Kitty cried in excitement. They all crowded around to see. The footprint was as large as a dinner plate. A tiger. William gasped with fear. A tiger? screamed Dolly. Oh, I wish this was just a nightmare and I could wake up back home. It had been bad enough in the city, but here we have crocodiles, snakes, and tigers. I wish I had never come at all. All William could do was to pray that God would protect them from all the dangers. He had not been living in the remote forest for long when his friend Dr. Thomas wrote and told him about a job as the manager of an indigo factory. This was a factory that made a dark purple dye from indigo plants. He would earn a good amount of money and still have plenty of time for translating the Bible and preaching. Although William did not want to drag his family on the other trip, it did seem a wonderful answer to his prayers. So, they packed up again and began their trip. This time, it was not a three-day journey, but a three-week one. And again, it was all by boat. Dolly certainly was not sorry to leave such a dangerous place with tigers, snakes, and crocodiles. The only thing she was sorry about was that her sister Kitty would not come with them. Kitty had decided to stay and marry the government man that shared his house with them. When they arrived this time, William was so relieved to see a house all ready for them to move into. He got straight into learning how to get the precious dye from the indigo plants. This was easy for William with all of the study he had done with plants in England. And he could not believe how much he was being paid to do something he enjoyed so much. It was five times more than he had ever been paid before. He praised God for it. Thank you, Father, for looking after us. I knew you would have an answer for my problems. And as well as having money to care for the family, there will be enough to help pay for the Bible translation. William was even able to practice speaking Bengali with the workers, and he lost no time telling them about Jesus. His missionary work was finally on the right track. Despite all the difficulties, William knew that it was God who had called him to India, and he still trusted that God was going to do great things in India. In fact, he did not just hope that God would do great things in India. He expected it. That is really trusting God. So here is William's motto. Expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. William knew that nothing was too hard for God and he expected God to do wonderful things in India. He expected God to work out all of his problems, where to live, how to earn money in India, and how to reach the Indian people with Jesus' love.
And because he was relying on God to do great things, he was willing to try some pretty daring things for God. Even his wife and his father thought that it was crazy to try it. This is what he meant when he said, attempt great things for God. Perhaps you are thinking to yourself right now, hmm, I can never be a missionary because I am not smart and I am not brave. God will not choose me. But remember, it is God who does the great things. We only have to be willing to trust Him and try. Perhaps you would like to tell God that you are willing to do whatever He asks you to, whether it is going to another country or supporting someone else. You can make that promise to God right now, even though it might be a long time before it can actually happen. Who knows what God can do through you if you are willing to attempt something great for Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life story of William because we have learned a lot. And it is just so good to know that really you do great things. You can do great things in our life. Father, we ask you to continually help us to always trust you and help us to always be willing to do whatever you want us to do. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.